To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Hi friends, let's now look at question number 4 from July 21 question paper. This is supposedly the most trickiest question we have in this question paper which is from the chapter uh, investment decisions that is capital budgeting. An existing company has a machine which has been in operation for 2 years. Its estimated remaining useful life is 4 years with no residual value in the end. Its current market value is rupees 3 lakhs. The management is considering a proposal to purchase an improved model of a machine which gives an increased output. The details are as under. Purchase price of the existing machine is 6 lakhs. New machine is 10 lakhs. Estimated life is 6 years and 4 years. Therefore, as uh, 2 years has already been exhausted, because the, the question says remaining useful life is 4 years and that of the new machine is also 4 years, therefore in the same timeline. Then residual value for the existing machine as well as the new machine is 0. Annual operating day is 300. Operating hours per day is 6 hours per day. So before we go to the next one, the question said annual operating days is 300. Operating hours per day is 6 hours. Therefore, what can we say is annual operating hours per day, 6 hours, totally 300 days. So, can we say 6 into 300, that is 1800 hours is the annual operating hours. So, annual operating hours is therefore 300 into 6, that is 1800 hours. So, let us go ahead. Selling price per unit is rupees 10 and rupees 10, same. Material cost per unit is rupees 2 and rupees 2, same. Output per hour in unit in units is to, uh, it's 20 units in case of existing machine and 40 units in case of the new machine. So, there is a change in the output. Perfect. Therefore, correspondingly what happens? The total output increases. Absolutely. So, in case of existing machine, output per hour in units. So, for 1 hour, we have 20 units in case of existing machine. For 1 hour, we have 40 units in case of new machine. Now, why is this helpful? Are output in case of existing machine, we have only 20 units per hour. But in case of new, there is we have 40 units. Therefore, there is an increase in the output. Now, correspondingly, we will also increase the revenue. Yes. Then, fixed overhead per annum, excluding depreciation. Please underline this point, friends. Excluding depreciation. Why? Because if he has given including depreciation, then we have to see whether it is as per book value or as per the tax, as per the Companies Act or as per the Income Tax Act. Corresponding, we have to work on. But here directly he says it is excluding deposition. Wonderful. So, we will get the figure CFBDT. Great. Yeah, the fixed overhead per annum excluding deposition is 1 lakh in, the, in case of existing machine. In case of new machine, it is decreasing. That's good. Working capital 1 lakh and rupees 2 lakhs. There is an increase in working capital. What is the increase in working capital from 1 lakh to 2 lakhs? Therefore, 1 lakh, that is 2 lakh minus 1 lakh. That is a net increase in working capital. Then, income taxes 30 income 30 percent 30 percent then assuming that the cost of capital is 10 percent and the company uses return down value of depreciation at 20 percent and it has several machines in 20 percent block again under this point so it is return down value and several machines in 20 percent block now return down value because what we have to do after we complete cfbtt when we say minus depreciation, we will not take straight line method, we will take 20 percent WDP, that is fine. It has several machines in 20 percent block, now what, in what way is this considerable? Friends, if it says it, it has got several machines in the same block, meaning if you remember the income tax act, then we said, see if there are no other machines, if the machine goes away, we can ignore the depreciation of the existing machine, but the, when there is a block of such machines, then we have to definitely consider the return down value as well as the sale value to know what is the difference or whether there is a surplus or a deficit in terms of depreciation. When there is a block, we, there will be, it will be beneficial for taxation purpose. This is what we learnt. Yes. Therefore, in computation of uh, base for depreciation, this will be helpful. This is very, very important. Then, advise the management on the replacement of machine as per NPV method. The discounting factors table given below, 10 percent for all the four years. Great. Now, the question is asking advise the management, how will you advise that also he, he, he was that is as per NPV method. That is we will compute the NPV of existing machine, NPV of new machine. If NPV of new machine is more than that of the existing machine, then we will say yes, the company going for replacement. In simpler words, can we compute incremental NPV? Absolutely yes, that will save time. 
instead of working on one machine, two machines separate separately, at once we can compute the incremental figures. What is incremental NPV? Very simple. Present value of incremental CFAT plus present value of incremental terminal cash inflow minus net initial cash outflow. That will give us the incremental NPV. If that is positive, we will say yes, the company can go ahead for replacement. If that is negative, then we will say no, no, the company should not go for replacement as the NPV is negative. That's all. Now, before we go into solution, let me just tell you friends, there was a question in the RTP of November 21, which is slightly similar to this. Not very much though, but yes, there are few different points like this block thing. Now, correspondingly, there will be changes in the depreciation we take. There also, we did the same thing. If you can go back and check, it will be helpful for us. But coming to this problem, here, what are the uh, uh, crucial elements which we are supposed to be careful? We said incremental NPV is what you are supposed to compute. Yes, we have three steps in that. Present value of incremental CFAT plus present value of incremental terminal cash inflow minus net initial cash outflow. What is net initial cash outflow? We will come to the reverse method, reverse order, so that will be easy for us. And we have the cost of existing machine. Yes, here, we do not have terminal cash inflow. In that question we had, but here we do not have any terminal cash inflow in terms of residual value, but there is something called working capital, yes. But here we are talking about incremental language, therefore we should see the incremental uh, uh, increase in working capital or incremental uh, working capital, yes there is an increment in the working capital also, from 1 lakh it became 2 lakhs, therefore it will be 2 minus 1, 1 lakh, that has to be added to the initial cash outflow, yes. So, cost of machine uh, plus that uh, net increase in working capital minus sale proceeds will get give us the initial cash outflow. Clear? Absolutely. Because we do not have any residual, residual value for the new machine. Clear. Done. Coming to the second one, second step, what is that? Present value of terminal cash inflow. Now, what is terminal cash inflow here again? We are talking about incremental, present value of incremental terminal cash inflow. That is also in the form of net working capital only. That 2 lakh minus 1 lakh what we told that 1 lakh into that uh, present value interest factor of the fourth year 0.683 that will give us the present value of incremental terminal cash inflow. Coming to the first one, the most important one, computation of present value of incremental CFAT. Now to compute present value of incremental CFAT, firstly we want what is incremental CFAT. To know what is incremental CFAT, we should know what is incremental CFBDT. So if we know what is or if we compute what is incremental CFBDT, from that, minus incremental depreciation will give us incremental PBT. Minus tax, don't say incremental tax, minus tax will give us incremental PAT. Add back the incremental depreciation will give us incremental CFAT. Now here, how do we compute incremental CFBDT? The first thing uh, in the process, from we have the sales value, we have all the costs where depreciation is not there. Therefore, from all the uh, sales, when we remove all the costs, we get something called CFBDT, yes. Now, we will just compare those two CFBDTs and the difference we will call it as incremental CFBDT. From that, we have to remove the incremental depreciation. Now, here, we have depreciation for the new machine. Also, there can be a depreciation surplus or a deficit for the existing machine. That also we are supposed to consider. Then, we will compute what is called incremental depreciation. We will take the base for depreciation from that, well, from that value, we will multiply with the, this 20 percent to arrive at the incremental depreciation for each year. That we will remove, we will get uh, incremental PBT minus tax. That is how we compute the incremental CFT, as simple as this. Okay, to say it sounds a little simple, but yeah, there are few complications. Let us see what, the, what these complications are and let us understand how to solve this problem. Let us write down the solution. This is question 4. Computation of incremental NPV. Now, what is incremental NPV? Incremental NPV is equal to present value of incremental CFAT plus present value of incremental terminal cash inflow minus net initial cash inflow. We said for uh, easy understanding, we will start in the reverse order. So, net one, net initial cash outflow. Now, what is net initial cash outflow? Step by step, we will write purchase price of new machine plus 
incremental working capital this is also an outflow minus sale value of old machine what is the purchase price of new machine cost of new machine is 10 lakhs that is 10 lakhs plus what is the incremental working capital 2 minus 1 1 lakh this is 2 lakhs minus 1 lakh minus what is sale value of old machine the question says uh, its current market value is 3 lakhs so we assume it is uh, sold at 3 lakhs only minus 3 lakhs 10 plus 1 11 minus 3 8 lakhs rupees 8 lakhs very simple done next the second one present value of incremental terminal cash inflow do we have any terminal cash inflow for the new machine yes in the name of networking capital that incremental working capital is there there is no residual value therefore present value of incremental terminal cash inflow is equal to present value interest factor into incremental terminal cash inflow now the only incremental terminal cash inflow we have is networking capital there is no uh, what we call residual value for both the machines therefore what is present value interest factor for the fourth year 0 0.683 into the same uh, 2 lakh minus 1 lakh that is 1 lakh so can we say it is rupees 68300 even more simple correct now the game begins that is computation of present value of incremental CFAT. Now, to know what is incremental CFAT, first of all, you should know what is incremental CFBDT. Therefore, computation of incremental CFBDT, then we will come at inc uh, arrive at incremental CFAT, then the present value, all right, incremental CFBDT. Now, particulars, we will say old machine and new machine, you can write all values in rupees, absolutely. Now. Friends, first of all, what do we need? We need the, okay, we need the sales first or revenue. We will call it A. So, annual output. What is annual output in case of old machine and new machine? Now, in the given question, we have we are supposed to consider three factors annual operating days operating hours per day and output per hour in units what is annual output that is output per hour the units that is we have 20 units multiplied by how many hours in one hour 20 units how many hours 6 hours therefore into operating hours per day into annual operating days. I repeat what is annual output our operating uh, output per hour in units. So in 1 hour 20 units like this how many hours 6 hours like this how many days 300 days. So this is how we compute yes. So in case of old machine it is uh, output per hour in unit is 20 into 6 into 3, 20 into 6 into 300 sorry, that is 36,000, this is units, why am I writing specifically in units because all the other values will be in rupees, then 36,000, now, now what is the change between old and new machine in, in, in terms of these three values, uh, operating hours per day is 6 same, Annual operating days are same, there is a change in operating output per hour, uh, output uh, per hour in units. Here it is 20 units, there it is 40 units, just double 
Therefore, what will be the answer into 2? 72,000. There. We have output. Now, we have selling price per unit. Yes, it is 10. Sales at rupees 10 per unit. Simply into 10. 3 lakh 60,000. 7 lakh 90. So, what are the sales values, friends? The revenue in case of old machine 3 lakh 60, in case of new machine 7 lakh 20. Then costs B. What are the costs we have? Material, labor, and overheads. All right. Material cost per unit is given to us 2 rupees per unit. Do we know how many units of output? Yes, we know 36,000 units. Therefore, material. How do we compute the total cost of uh, material? Cost per unit into annual output. Now, what is cost per unit? 2 rupees. Uh, in both cases, same. 2 rupees, 2 rupees. Therefore, 2 into 36,000. 72,000 rupees. Double because 2 is fixed here. This is the output is doubled. Therefore, 70 into 2 is 140. 2 into 2 is 4. Therefore, 1 lakh 44,000 is the cost of material then labor now labor that is given to us labor cost per hour that is 20 and 30 there is a variation okay so labor is based on not units it is based on per hours therefore for one hour 20 rupees or 30 rupees what is the annual operating hours we know that we did it uh, earlier itself so one operating hour hours per day is 6, annual operating hours is 300, so 6 into 300, 1800 hours, that is that is fixed in both the cases, that is old machine and new machine, so 1800 hours is the annual operating hours into labor cost per hour, therefore what is labor cost per hour into annual hours or annual operating hours. In case of material what happened, cost per unit into annual out output or annual units, here cost per hour into annual hours. Now. So, cost per hour is 20 and uh, annual is 1800, we know that, yes, therefore 20 into 1800, this is 36,000, then 30 into 1800, 54,000, then next fixed overhead per annum excluding depreciation. So, fixed overhead excluding depreciation that is directly given to us that is 1 lakh and 60,000. So, what are the total costs now? This is A total cost that is B. We have 54,000 in our calci. So, plus 60,000, I am talking about the new machine, plus 1 lakh 44,000, 2 lakh 58,000 and in case of uh, the existing machine, 72,000, yeah, 72,000 plus 36,000 plus 1 lakh, that is 2 lakh 8,000. Therefore, can we say, CFBDT is 360 minus 2 lakh 8000. Absolutely, we have 2 lakh 8000 in the calci. So, minus 360 will get a negative figure, but no worries, it is actually positive. The other way around. Therefore, 1 lakh 52,000. In case of the new machine, it is 7 lakh 20 minus 258. 7 lakh 20 minus 2 lakh 58,000. 4 lakh 62,000. Therefore, incremental CFBDT is how much? That is 462 we have in the calci minus 1,52,000. Yes, that is 3,10,000. So, till here, till now what did we compute? We computed what is incremental CFBDT. Great. Now, what do we have to compute rest to arrive at incremental CFAT? We have this figure directly with us. So, instead of doing it separately, when, when we are doing it combinedly, incremental CFBDT minus 
incremental depreciation, incremental PBT minus tax, incremental PAT, add back the incremental depreciation, what will get? Incremental CFD, that is all. Therefore, our next computation is incremental depreciation. Let us write down computation of, now are we computing the incremental depreciation friends? No, no, we are computing the base for incremental depreciation. From that what happens? Every year, uh, whatever percentage, 20 percent is uh, given as uh, rate of depreciation. Therefore, from this base, we will say 20 percent for the first year, minus 20 percent for second year, like this and so on. Therefore, computation of base for incremental depreciation. Now, what do I mean by base for incremental depreciation? Friends, the question clearly said there is a block with, uh, with such assets. Therefore, we should now compute what is the WDV of the existing machine, what is the base for depreciation of the new machine, the difference will be the base for incremental depreciation. Let us write down WDV of existing machine. Now, what is the purchase price of existing machine that is given to be 6 lakhs? Yes. Purchase price rupees 6 lakhs. Now, depreciation at year 1. So, what is rate of depreciation at 20 percent? What is 20 percent of 6 lakhs? 10 percent of 60,000, therefore 1 lakh 20,000? Yes, 1 lakh 20,000. Now, if 1 lakh 20,000 is a depreciation of year 1, what will be depreciation of year 2? Again at 20 percent only. Therefore, so 6 lakh minus 1 lakh 20 is 4 lakh 80,000 into 20 percent, 96,000. Then, or 1 lakh 20 minus uh, 20 percent, so directly 1 lakh 20 minus 20 percent will give the same answer, 96,000. Either ways, conceptually and technically. Now, this will give us therefore WDV of existing machine. So, 96,000 plus 1 lakh 20,000 is some 2 lakh 16,000 minus 6 lakhs is 3 lakh 84,000. This part is clear? Yes. We will call it as 1. Now, what is the base for depreciation of new machine? So, how do we compute the base for depreciation of new machine? Ideally, what do we do? We will take the purchase price of new machine, then we will uh, remove the sale value of the old machine. But here, friends, there is a block of assets. Therefore, what we will do, we will not simply remove what is the sale price of the old machine, we will also add the return down value of the old machine. If it is more, the surplus will be added. If it is less, there is a benefit that will be reduced. Therefore, purchase price of new machine, rupees. that is given to be how much? 10 lakhs less sale value of old machine that is 3 lakhs had this block point not been mentioned we would have stopped this block point not been mentioned add wdv of old machine that is we just got now 3 lakh 84000 that is simply the wdv is slightly higher than the sale value what does it mean the value which is it which is it's got it's higher than the value which it is sold therefore there is an excess which has to be added to the purchase price therefore depreciation base of new machine that is 10 lakh 84000 absolutely now therefore base for Incremental depreciation is how much? This 10 lakh 2 minus 1, that is 10 lakh 84,000 minus 3 lakh 84,000. We have the figure here. 
So, 84, 84 is gone. 10 minus 3 is rupees 7 lakhs. This is the uh, crucial point in this problem. Now, we will take it as base. So, from this base, what we will do? The rate of depreciation is 20 percent. So, 20 percent of 7 lakhs, whatever it is that 10 percent is 70,000, 1 lakh 40,000. Depreciation, incremental depreciation for year 1. Again, then minus 20 percent for year 2, minus 20 percent for year 3, minus 20 percent for year 4. That's it. Now, we have incremental CFBDT. Now, we have incremental uh, depreciation. CFBDT minus depreciation will give us PBT minus uh, taxes PAT, add back depreciation. CFAT. Just add incremental for each. This is the way we are supposed to go ahead. That's all. It's all over. But one small point here, friends. If you go back to the problem again, as we said, uh, question number 5 from the RTP of number 21, we followed a different method of arriving at CFAT. What is that? Instead of writing so many columns, that is uh, CFBDT, minus depreciation, PBT, minus tax, PAT, add back depreciation, CFAT. See, there are so many columns. Instead, what we said, there is a shortcut method. That is, now how do we arrive at CFAT, friends? CFBDT minus depreciation, PBT minus of tax. So, minus depreciation, this is PBT, minus of tax is it into 1 minus tax. We get PAT plus depreciation. Just for all these terms, we will just add incremental, that is all. Now, this, if you expand this equation, then what will you get finally? that is equal to. Now, if we expand this equation, what happens? Let us call this C, let us call this as D, let us call this as T and D. So, C into 1 minus tax minus D into 1 minus tax plus depreciation. C into 1 minus tax minus D plus DT minus into minus is plus plus D. These two get cancelled. Therefore, CFAT can write as C expanding CFBDT into 1 minus tax plus depreciation into tax. Now, why am I choosing this method for the table is because friends, we know this number is constant. Okay, just add incremental for each of them. Yes, we know this number is constant. Now, tax rate is given to be how much? Some 30 percent. So, this into 70 percent will give us the answer. Do we know what is CFBDT? Yes, we already know that. We computed that. 3,10,000. So, 3,10,000 into 70 percent. So, 3,10,000 into 70 percent. What is tax rate? Yeah, 70, 30 percent, yes. 2,17,000. This number is fixed for us. We do not have to put a table for all this stuff. Now, this is incremental depreciation into tax. Now, if we write a column for incremental depreciation, the first column will be incremental depreciation. The next column will be incremental depreciation into tax. The next column plus this, we already know this. So, it directly will give us the answer of CFAT or incremental CFAT. This will simplify the number of columns. See, if you if you are slightly confused about this, you can as well try the same method of uh, CFBDT minus depreciation, PBT minus tax, PAT, add back depreciation is equal to CFAT. Same thing. But here, just to save time, and to save space and to present it even more simpler, we are choosing this method. Whether you do this method or that method, we will get the same answer. Therefore, computation of incremental CFAT or can we say directly present value of incremental CFAT? We have the uh, interest factors also here. We will simply multiply. Anyways, the number of columns have reduced. We can use that space for this where, what do we know here, where incremental CFBDT is equal to rupees 3,10,000 and incremental CFBDT into tax is equal to rupees, how much we, we got here, 2,17,000, yes. So, values in rupees. Now, look at the game, look at the fun. First, we will write year 1, 2, 3 and 4. Luckily, we only have 4 years. Now, incremental depreciation. What is the base we know, friends? We just computed the base. 
the incremental for incremental depreciation is 7 lakhs. So, at 20 percent on 7 lakhs, this will be the first figure. Subsequently, uh, we will just write at 20 percent. Yeah, at 20 percent on 7 lakhs, this was the first year, minus 20, subsequently we will get the values. Now, 7 lakhs into 20 percent, 1 lakh 40,000 minus 20 percent, 1 lakh 12,000 minus 20 percent, 89,600 minus 20 percent, 71,680. Now, incremental depreciation into tax at the rate of 30 percent. No friends, every time we do not have to uh, say 1 lakh 40 into 30 percent, 112 into 30 percent, we said this is a small shortcut or a technique, 30 percent nothing but 0 0.3. When you are multiplying with the same number, first type that number that is 0 0.3 into say for the first number we say 1 lakh 40,000, that is 40,000, yes. No, do not type anything, just simply type 1 lakh 12,000, 1, 1, 2, triple 0. Will give us what is 0 0.3 into 1 lakh 12,000, that is 30,600. I hope you remember this technique. Again, simply directly type 89,600, that will give us 0 0.3 into 89,600, that is 26,880. Again, simply type 71,680, that is 21,504. So, whenever you are multiplying with a constant number, first you type that number, say for example, for easier understanding, say 5 into 6. When I say 5 into 6, the answer is 30. If you simply type, you can just check, say 5 into, uh, into 6, yeah, the answer is 30. Now, if I, 5 being the constant, if I simply press 8 and then say is equal to, we will get the answer is 40. So, that 5 is stored, the, or uh, 2 is equal to, we will get 10, 9 is equal to, we will get 45. So, this is how this is a small shortcut we can follow even in the examinations to save time. 4 years is okay, but when we have longer number of years, this is a good technique. When it comes to multiplication, the number which is constant has to be first. When it comes to addition, the number has to be the second one. For example, 5 plus 4 or, or 4 plus 5. Now, now, what is constant? 5 is constant. So, if you can check in the calcy, 4 plus 5, the answer is 9. Now, if I simply type a number, say 9 and then say is equal to, I will not get 4 plus 9, I will get 5 plus 9. So, that is 5 plus 9, 14, 9 is equal to, I will I'll get 14 or 6, 5 plus 6 is 11 is equal to, we will get 11. Therefore, when it is addition, the number which is constant has to be the second number. When it is multiplication, the number which is constant has to be typed first. Moving ahead, now we have what is incremental depreciation to tax. Friends, what is our formula saying? This part is done. This part is constant. Therefore, this whatever value we have plus 2,17,000 will give us what? Incremental CFAT. Therefore, incremental CFAT. Simply write plus 2,17,000. Now, we can follow this technique what we just mentioned. So, 42,000 plus 2,17,000. Therefore, Therefore, this 2,17,000 will become constant now. So, is equal to 2,59,000. Now, simply I will press 33,600. I will get uh, uh, the result of 33,600 plus 2,70,000 by simply pressing is equal to 2,50,600. Now, the next number is 26,880. Just type that number. And then is equal to will give me the answer of 26,880 plus 2,17,000 that is 2,43,880. Then uh, lastly 21,504 that is 2,38,504. So, with this I am done with the incremental CFATs. Now, multiplying with the present value interest factor will give us present value of incremental CFAT. Now, what are the present value interest factors that is given to us? Yeah, if you look at the table, we have the present value interest factors 0 0.909, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9,
0.826 at 10% most famous numbers or most famous discount rate 0.683 that's it now okay i already have I've removed it now we will start from 2 lakh 15000 into 0 0.909 is equal to we will write the value and then press m plus so that at the end we can directly add accumulate all these values and mrc will give us the total of present value of incremental cfats Therefore, 2,59,000 into 0 0.909 is equal to 235,431, 235,431, M plus. But remember friends, when you are using M plus, first you should ensure that it is on all cancel, AC mode. <clears throat> then you start computing. Then, simply 250,600 into 0.826, that is, 2,6995.6, can we call it as 2,6996, absolutely, M plus 2,43,880 into 0 0.751, that will be 1,83,153.88, so we will call it 1,83,154, M plus, and lastly 2,38,504 into 0.683 that comes to be 1,62898.2 therefore 162898 m plus and mrc will give us 7,88478.7 so we will call it as therefore present value of incremental cfat is how much 7,88479 that's all over this is what we wanted to compute, the first thing, the first and the most important one, yes. Now, we have uh, computed seven, uh, present value of incremental CFAT that is 7,88,479, then we have our present value of uh, incremental terminal cash flow and we also have our net initial cash flow. That is it, the game is over. Therefore. Therefore, incremental NPV that is present value of <coughs> incremental CFAT plus present value of incremental terminal cash inflow minus net cash inflow. This value we have it right here. So, rupees 788,479 plus what is present value of terminal cash inflow that uh, 0 0.683 into 1 lakh, so 68,300 minus net initial cash flow we just saw, we got it as 8 lakhs. So, 788478.7 we have it in the calci plus 68,300 minus 8 lakhs, that comes to be 56,778.7. So, therefore, incremental NPV is equal to rupees 56,779. Is it a positive figure or negative figure? It is a positive figure. Therefore, what do we conclude now? Incremental NPV is positive. Therefore, what is the advice we give to the company? The company can go ahead with the replacement as the incremental NPV is positive. This is how we compute and just do not forget to write down the conclusion. The company can go ahead to replace the existing machine with the new machine. Now comes the golden words as the incremental NPV is positive. So, this is how we compute the incremental NPV in case of this given scenario.